I used to do a lot of knitting. Now that I can do in the dark. Mm. As long as it's just plain apart, I couldn't do a fancy pattern. But I mean, um, they could, when we used to be in America, some places we'd stop and they'd have a bonfire at night and sit around the fire and somebody might play music or something like that. And I would sit and knit. I couldn't, couldn't believe it. Couldn't believe that I could sit there and knit in the dark. My mum and dad, no. we, they lived in Dagenham. He came home from work and his neighbour, who was also a Geordie, said that she'd been taken away in her ambulance, but she didn't know where. So he went to the phone box, phoned up. She was at Hammersmith. So he got himself changed and went straight away. By the time he got there, she'd gone. This is, this is me, a dancing class. And uh, we did the teddy bears picnic. <laughs> so they got that. And how, how old were you there? About five or six. And we, we also did ballet dancing. I don't know if you know, with ballet dancing, you've got a really solid toe in the ballet shoes to go up on point. Mm. I was the only one that didn't go up on point. <laughs> well, it hurt. Mm, I can imagine. I couldn't do it. We were going to go to Australia because we couldn't get anywhere to live. And about that at the time, They'd come out with this idea of unit roid houses, which were huge blocks of like, like cinders, more or less, all packed together. You know what I mean? And they, they you know, built houses ever so quickly with them. So Dick, my husband's friend, he was our best man, rang Eddie up one day and said, about, How about if we get together? get a crowd and build these houses, because they were all in the same boat. There were 60 originally, but we finished up with 48, because some of them fell by the wayside. And did you go with those uni No, houses? no, no. This we got serious. halfway through the, them going to classes, and they said, why don't we buy, build proper houses and do, do it properly? It, as I say, it took four years, but it was a fantastic achievement. And we, they were valued at 6,000, but they cost us 2,000. And was it the co-op that helped pay for the bricks and mortar? Oh yeah, they paid for them. As we went up stage by stage, and then we started paying the mortgage. There must have been an enormous sense of satisfaction that you've... Oh, Lord, yeah. The, the, the husbands of, uh, and, and the kids, I'm I sure, yeah. had built these houses. And it was a little bit like here. Everybody knew everybody else. Mm. And it was like an extended family. If you had to... Say you had to go to the doctors in Brentwood, well, a neighbour would look after your children while you went. And things like that, you know? A little tiny village school, church school. And that was right on the corner. You took another job just when your kids got 16. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that one? Oh, yeah, well, I went to the telephone exchange. It was an evening job. So as Eddie came in, I went out. We had one little old lady that used to keep ringing up and saying, what's the, not ringing up, picking up the phone, what's the time? <laughs> Things like that, you know, you get, and then we, we'd get the naughty calls. Oh. Kids in call boxes. What did, what was that like? Well, it wasn't bad. What Once or twice I got one to say, can I have a date with you or something like that? <laughs> I'd say, I'm old enough to be your grandmother. <laughs> and you couldn't even drop the phone, you know. <laughs> like your chair, I think I need one of those. You can oh, go up and down pretty, all day long. I, I can you? sleep in it even if I want to. And when when I had my knee done, that's the last thing I had done, you know. 
It was brilliant because it got me. It almost stand me up, you see. Oh gosh, look at that! Yeah. yeah. Well, don't go over, Dorothy. It won't. <laughs> Oh, don't, don't do any more. <laughs> don't do any more.